Thank you, uh, Madam Deputy Speaker. And can I start by saying what a pleasure it is to uh, follow the Honourable Lady, and I, I too pay tribute to her work in yeah, yeah, championing yeah, yeah, yeah. patience. I think the calm silence in which the House just listened to her remarks uh, says volumes, actually, as does the many nods of heads of uh, many colleagues here, around here. the House. Uh, can I also start by declaring an interest, uh, Madam Deputy Speaker, which is that my hospital, Cannock Chase Hospital, is the other hospital that forms part of uh, Mid-Staffs. So my constituents, uh, as my honourable friends have, have been intimately affected uh, by the fallout from Midstaffs and the Francis uh, report. And I would echo uh, some of the comments already made that I wouldn't wish a public inquiry uh, or a TSA process on any member uh, of this House. It is a horrendously long and drawn-out process. It is incredibly stressful for everyone involved, not least the patients who use it and the staff who work in the hospitals affected. But I would say that it was worth it, and I think the debate we're having today shows that the, that the outcome uh, was worth it if we learn uh, the right lessons. And I want to take this opportunity, Madam uh, Deputy Speaker, to, te to praise uh, the staff at both Stafford uh, and Cannock Hospitals uh, for getting on with the job, uh, even when they are not sure what the uh, future will be. And since the Minister is here, can I take this opportunity to urge him once more in one second, to, to, to urge the, the, the Minister to once more move to the new organisational structure with Wolverhampton running Cannock uh, and UNHS running Stafford as soon as possible to end uh, this, this insecurity that the staff of both Cannock and uh, Stafford hospitals have, uh, have suffered under for too long. I, I, I'm glad to hear it. I'm grateful to him uh, for giving away so early on, and uh, I was just listening quite carefully to what he said. He, he said that he thought the TSA process was worth it. Could I just kind of press him a little bit on that? Does he really think that was ever going to deliver a fair outcome for his local hospital, given that it followed a three-year public inquiry when the hospital had lost patients and lost staff as a result? Shouldn't, in the spirit of the call that the uh, member for staff had made, shouldn't we all unite to recognise the exceptional circumstances that, your, that his local trust has been through? And couldn't, isn't it the case that a TSA process would never be able to capture the exceptional nature of what has happened to the local health economy, and in fact we're only looking very narrowly at the trust's finances in terms of its sustainability. Shouldn't, shouldn't that be the call that we're making now in terms of the government? Yeah. I thank the honourable gentleman for giving way. And I, 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 there's a number of questions in, in his comment, and I'm still actually not clear of his position as to whether he thinks the public inquiry was, 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 was the right decision or not, because that is what has led uh, to, um, to the conclusions and the recommendations for improvements we have today. But I would just answer his one question about whether the TSA process was worth it for my local hospital. I think that was the, 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 the phrase he used. My local hospital is 50% empty as we stand in this chamber speaking today. Cannock Chase Hospital was run down by the, the staff, uh, by the management of mid-staffs, to near closure. Uh, half of it lies empty. Of course, any building that lies half empty has a sword of Damocles hanging over it. And nobody complained locally, frankly, uh, from the opposition side over the last 10 years, as services were slowly stripped out by stealth. The fact that, as a result of the TSA process, Royal Wolverhampton NHS Trust is going to take over the running of Cannock Hospital, fill it from 50% to 100% utilisation, and invest £20 million uh, pounds in refurbishing it shows that the TSA process has been fantastic uh, from a Cannock Chase uh, perspective, even though it has been a stressful and drawn out process. Uh, Madam Deputy Speaker, I also just want to quickly praise the work of the member for Stafford uh, for his tireless work on this issue uh, and indeed for his technical and clinical knowledge of the services locally, which frankly is second to none in this House. His campaigning has led us a long way frankly, from the point when A&E, maternity and paediatrics were all going to be closed. And frankly, that is one hell of a legacy of public service to the people of Stafford, who I am sure will return him at the next election for a second term. And I hope that his second term is not as dominated by the issue of Stafford Hospital as his first term has been. Madam Deputy Speaker, as we know, the Government introduced measures into the Care Bill as its uh, legislative response to the Francis Inquiry. And those measures included the introduction of Ofsted-style ratings for hospitals and care homes, creating a single regime to deal with financial and care failures at NHS hospitals, including a duty of candour, and also making it a criminal offence for care providers to give false and misleading information about their performance. Frankly, it may surprise many that those measures don't already exist. Local parents in my constituency send their children to schools in Cannock, 
which have an Ofsted rating, and they can speak to the teachers about any documented problems within the school. Those same parents then take their elderly relatives to Stafford and are surprised when they receive appalling care, and indeed some even suddenly die, because there is simply no clear ranking about that hospital is performing in the same way as their school. And in fact, worse, uh, Madam Deputy Speaker, the, the nursing management and staff had actively been covering up the problems that existed. As we have seen locally, the events at Midstaffs clearly demonstrated that a culture in the NHS had been allowed to develop, where defensiveness and secrecy were put ahead of patient care. Think about that for a second. Ahead of patient care. Isn't that a damning indictment in the 21st century of an institution set up to improve the health of its people, has been encouraged over the years to protect itself and its reputation more than the people it exists to serve. And I think everybody in this House should reflect on that before they rush to defend the reputation of the NHS. We should remember why the NHS exists, which is to serve the patient, not to serve itself or to serve any particular political party. Madam Deputy Speaker, in the time available, I just want to talk about two things, uh, prioritising patient experience and the TSA process. But before I do, I think it's worth remembering how we got to this point today. To quote, as has already been quoted by the Honourable Gentleman for Stoke South, the Macmillan Cancer Support Briefing for this debate, I think it, which I think gets it spot on, it says, and I quote, the failure at Mid Staffordshire NHS Foundation Trust to put patients and their priorities at the centre of their work was a key finding from Robert Francis's report. In particular, the report found that the Trust prioritised its finances and Foundation Trust application over providing a high quality of care that put patients first. Or to quote a source that we on this side of the House all read very regularly, the World Socialist website which said, and I quote, under, under the 1997 to 2010 Labour government, Stafford was pressurised to transform into a foundation trust, an initiative aimed at making hospitals semi-independent of the Department of Health by freeing them to find private funding sources. In the process, £10 million was cut from the trust's budget and 150 jobs lost, leading to nursing staff shortages, overwork and the inability to provide a high quality service to vulnerable patients. Any excess deaths at the hospital must be attributed to this shift. Would the, way. Uh, would, would he perhaps recall also, difficult actually because he wasn't in the House at the time, but uh, by reference to previous documents, that when the meeting of, took place to grant trust status, the then head of monitor, uh, Moyes, said gave a whole series of questions to the Trust, and of the 48 questions that were asked, 39 of them were about finance. In other words, that was the priority at the time. That's where things were going badly wrong. I'm grateful for the Honourable Gentleman's intervention, and he has a longer history uh, of me than me uh, in this House, and he will have a longer future too. But he is right to point out uh, that finance was put way above uh, patient. Care. And frankly, we all know in Staffordshire that people are still astonished as to how this trust was ever granted FD status. I asked Robert Francis himself, and he could not tell me. He said he had no idea how in that climate that the Honourable Gentleman just describes, this failing trust that was bankrupt, that was able to shed staffs uh, for no clinical reason at all in order to achieve this FD status and was granted when all these problems were just lurking uh, beneath the surface. And I welcome any intervention from from the benches opposite as to how that was signed off. So, Madam Deputy Speaker, when we on this side say Labour created a culture of targets in the NHS which led to thousands of unnecessary deaths at Mid Staffordshire Hospital, it is not just us in the Conservative Party saying it. It is the World Socialist website. It is independent charities like Macmillan who say the Trust prioritised its Foundation Trust application over providing a high quality of care that put patients first. And I think we should just be clear, uh, Madam Deputy Speaker, what that actually means. It means that the management of Midstaff's Trust shed 150 nurses, many of them my actual constituents, sacked them from their jobs, jobs that were clearly vital given the appalling care that then followed, simply in order to hit financial targets. 
But these were not financial targets due to budget constraints. And to be fair to the last Labour government, they didn't reduce the NHS budget in Staffordshire. These, these job cuts were deliberate cuts to aspire to a certain organisational form. What a strange place we arrive at in the 21st century where managers think it is acceptable to shed necessary nurses without budget constraints simply to achieve an organisational form, as though that is in some way more important than serving the health needs of the patients that use those facilities. Amanda Epstein, that is why this Francis report is so important because for the first time it very clearly says that the patient should come first, not a foundation trust application, that there should be a statutory duty of candour rather than a culture of cover-up, and that feedback from patients should be valued and listened to, not ignored, as was the case in Stafford. And finally, that these hospitals should be rated, like Ofsted rate schools, and publicly assessed, so that patients can make informed choices about their care. And the figures, I think, show that NHS care has changed for the better uh, just one year on from the Francis inquiry into Mid Staffordshire. The 14 hospitals now in special measures are slowly being turned around, with 650 extra nurses hired in those hospitals, strong leaders installed, and 49 board level managers replaced. There are now 2,400 extra nurses hired since the Francis report, with over 3,000 more nurses working on NHS hospital wards and 6,000 more clinical staff overall since May 2010. And this is and this crucial figure. Nearly 1.6 million patients have given direct feedback on what they thought about their treatment through the uh, friends and family test. So there is clearly a shift of priorities going on within the NHS, which is to be welcomed. But this would never have come about were it not for the Francis report, an inquiry, of course, which never would have happened under the last government. And I repeat what I said earlier about the importance of not protecting the reputation of the NHS as an institution, but finally, finally focusing above all else on the care of the actual patients it exists to serve. Joan Morley.